Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we are going to use a formula to calculate the average of the top five values. So in this set of data we have eight exam scores for different students and we need to know the average of the top five scores to evaluate their performance. Now we are going to look at two ways of doing this so that you can pick and choose the formula that you prefer. Now over in J2, we will calculate the average of the top five scores for our first student, which is Errol. So if I can just scroll across and zoom in on that cell a bit, we will begin with an average function. And that's possibly not a surprise being what we're doing. Now I'm going to begin with the, the normal average function. And you know that that's not good enough alone because we need the top five scores and that average is not going to take into account that. So we're going to bring in a function called large and some of you may be familiar with that also. We have the max function for the biggest score but large will allow us to return the cape value. So the second or the fourth or the fifth largest. Now the problem we have is that the large function typically used on its own will return you know the fourth largest score or the fifth largest score we need the first second third fourth and the fifth largest score so that we can average the five of them so with this large function i will select the array of values which are these scores b2 to i2 let me just get back to our formula and when i put my comma and it prompts for that cape value and we normally just type something like three for third largest. But we're not going to do that. We're going to open up a set of curly braces so that I can provide an array of values. And I can just type one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four, comma, five, closing curly braces, close bracket for large, close bracket for average. So the large function is going to provide those five values, that array of values so that then average can just do its job like it does. But it's just looking at those five. If I press enter, we have 79 for Errol and scrolling this down and bringing it back so we can see their names, we have an average score for each of them. So there is one way of performing that, is to provide that array using the large function. Okay, so let's have a look at another way, because maybe you don't like the idea of using these curly braces in that array. Well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? But you may have been considering when I went to do the average function that we could have just used average if. Average if is a conditional average, and that's what we're doing. We have a condition. We just want the top five. So let's have a look at how we could do it with average if. Equals average if. That will prompt me for the range. Okay, that's B2 to I2. No problem. Okay, the criteria. Now this is where it gets a little bit more exciting because we need to know if, you know, to average it, it's gotta be a number that's greater than or equal to that the fifth largest number. So inside some double quotes, I'm going to type greater than or equal to and close off those double quotes because when you're using functions like average if, sum if, count if, and you're writing criteria directly inside it, you need to uh, write it as a string, these expression symbols, these logical symbols. I'm then going to use my ampersand to concatenate to this, this criteria the fifth largest value. So large function, let's look at the array of these numbers. And if you can bring back comma the fifth largest close bracket another comma because underneath it tells me it now needs the average range I'm getting fed up of selecting it I'm just going to copy and paste this one I've got here With all that scrolling close bracket so in this range of values we want to average anything that's greater than or equal to the fifth largest value in which case yeah average from this range so when we press enter, I'll look at 79 again. 
And if you drag it down, it's the same results as before. But that was a different technique that maybe you prefer. We've got one that provides an array of values with the curly braces. And then we're making the most of this conditional average, which I think came into Excel in 2007. And it's not always been around. It's something around that time. Um, and still with that large function. So there are two ways. We can then tidy these values up if you're not happy with the decimals. Uh, maybe I'll bring it in so that they all show show just one decimal place, or you could choose to take out those decimal places entirely and just have them like this. Now, what I was thinking is I was looking at this when I did it, and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we could, because we might have a lot more students than just six, just to identify the best one nice and easy. So I thought, yeah, let's, let's change the color of the largest one. So in a different cell, if I look at a formula such as uh, equals, let's start with Errol's score there again. If that number is equal to the maximum number in the range, therefore it's the biggest one. So if I just fix that range and close bracket, I want to copy and paste this formula. Let me come out of there after copying it, select the range of scores, the evaluated performance scores, and in conditional formatting, I'm going to create a new rule using a formula, and I'm going to paste that into this box and pick a nice format color. Let's have a blue, why not? And let's have some bold font as well. That would look beautiful. And I OK. And now we've just got the little bit of extra visual so that if I did have a lot of students, uh, I've now averaged the top five, but then also indicated who was like, the best in that range. You could go on and find, you know, who are the top three students or something like that. Maybe that's a challenge for you guys. So I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.